Good afternoon, traders. I'm reaching out to you uh, on December 3rd, a Saturday afternoon, with a quick recap of uh, Friday's activity and how everything played out last week and what to look forward to uh, Monday morning. Um, yet again, <clears throat> everything was about the 200, but let's take a quick look at how this thing played out. And you can see in the morning, and we're going to show you yet again how moving averages are extremely important. And here's your panic bar. And probably a low volume snap down. I mean, I did. I watched this. This thing went from down about 470 in in, in, in a minute. Um, they bottomed out at about 09. And then you can see price here hovering around uh, 18. Or uh, give her. They bottomed out a bunch of times at around 15 or 18, and that's where this MA is right here. So, you know, you got the gap lower in a bullish trend. So, ideally, you want to play for the long position. As any, as I talked about gaps for the last two weeks, lower gaps get run up and higher gaps get run down. Not always that day, not always within hours, but inevitably. And this one <clears throat> opened up down here. By the time the opening bell came in, this thing was pushing around 30. And from that point on, it, it just pushed higher. And it got itself. And you can see that, as, as expected, the target was the MA, the 200 MA. And it sat there. And it was going to hold on, you know, apparently... Bad news is good news at this point of the year. And the way they, they rammed this up here on uh, Thursday was just a sign that they were not going to roll this thing over. The news wasn't good, but the market is, is just pushing it to the side for right now. The bigger players are going to key off of this 200. And this is what they did yesterday morning. They just got on board and they pushed it, in fact. There should be a couple. Here's your first big spike right there. There's your volume spike. And they just meandered. You can see the volume stayed pretty hard to keep them above uh, that 200. A couple more. And then it was a matter of just filling the gap, which it did. And then it rolled over by the end of the day to settle where it settled. So, uh, once again, this is going to be what you're going to be paying attention to on Monday. And that's sitting around uh, 4051. Um, it's a little bit below a buy pivot that I have. It's sitting at around 4061. And then my next support comes down around 4036. And just below that 36 is that next MA. So these are the key areas. Anything under here, and then we're probably going to scramble, but that's not, I just don't see it happening. I think they're going to try to hold the two, and if they don't hold two, you play you play it. You play it accordingly, you know, but if it continues to show strength there, ideally we're going to push back up over this trend line and get up to 4,100. So, you know, the only advice I can give you for Monday is watch for the gaps. You know, the higher gap, it's about... Can, is it going to sustain these higher prices? You get like a 30, 40 handle gap higher, you know, there's going to be a pullback and they're going to fill that gap back down to settlement. So, you know, and the same goes for a lower opening. You're going to want to look to take the buy. I mean, you're going to pull the trends, the trends up. You know, the opportunities are from the, to, to get the longs, especially at the ideal locations, whether it's the moving averages or the daily pivots. Now, these pivots are a little bit different in mine because it, it takes into account the post-close and the numbers in the post-close, obviously they rolled them a little bit. So mine takes that into account, but I don't know where they went uh, after the post-close. But nonetheless, the strategy remains the same. You know, you get an extreme run-up and, and an over-exuberance early leaving. I mean, I'm talking about a higher opening. You're going to look for signs of weakness and for the thing to roll back down. And the same says for a lower opening. It'll make its run back up and we'll take it for, you'll take it from there. Let it fill the gap go back up. It all depends where it opens. You know, this is just a classic 
short squeeze by the institutions. They just take advantage of the value. You know, they have put a lot of interest into this. I mean, some of this was a little overdone. A lot of retail traders, and you know, why were they? They're not going to back off because the end they want this thing to be marked up anyway. So, you know, if they really thought this number was catastrophic, then what would have happened was they would have rammed them back to settlement and then they would have rolled them back right down because that's where they're going to get back in. They're going to get in where they want to get in. Not They're not going to jump on it after everybody pounded it at 7.30. They're always going to squeeze you out, all the overnight traders out, and then they're going to make the decision. But this is about keeping it up. It's December, the obvious signs are there. they want to hold this up and mark it up. So, you know, you want to play from the long side. Uh, you can see that looking at these three markets, the NASDAQ is far from its 200. So it's sitting in the middle you know, it, it's trying to get on board with everybody else. The Dow is above its two. And, of course, the ES is above its two. And technically, this is a bullish sign. So, you know, as this, if price stays above it, you got to stay You got to stay with the trend to the upside. And if this price fails and you see any type of volume spike around here and it starts topping out around this number after going through it, and you got to be prepared for the possibility of this thing rolling. But it might not happen this month. I, I just can't see it. Once again, got a humongous gap all the way back here somewhere, all the way down here. Starts at around 48.70. Actually, 30, I'm sorry, around 38.70. Long ways from that. So just going to have to see how this plays out on Monday, yeah, traders. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope the information is helpful. And you know what? This is really your success and your trading is in comes with the, the amount of work you put into it. And it's really not a lot. You know, if you look at this stuff like, you know, in this type of uh, approach, you're going to put yourself in really good positions. Uh, you know, you're going to have to utilize a little patience with it, but it, it's worth it. You know, it's better to wait for the right trade than to get into a trade and get stopped out and then takes you out of the game. Then you don't want to, you don't want to initiate again. And that's the most important thing about trading is you're going to have, lo you're going to have losses. You know, it's not a perfect science. So the best traders are the ones who, you know, can, uh, can take that loss and get back on it and stick to their, and stick to the, to their uh, specific trading style and strategies that best suit their, their particular way. So this is how I like to do it. I think it's wonderful in terms of the higher probabilities on top of the fact that you have a better opportunity of not getting punched out with the proper stop. Stop should always be where the market is not going to go. And you don't let them go too tight because they'll get those squeeze outs. They'll get you out and then they're going to make their move. So you got to put them where the market won't go. This platform is a little different. I'd have to show you on something a little... Uh, uh, broken down. These are 15-minute uh, bars. This actually might be a five, but sometimes when you get those platforms, many of them are, are showing you this now. They have all the data. So, you know, they're all plugged into all the information that gets sent to these exchanges. And, you know, they have all these algorithms, what have you, that provide the turns a little bit more in depth. You can see the volume changing at certain locations. You know, there'll be the pressure going down and you'll see all the heavy volume and then you'll see a super volume spike at a significant level and, and that's when the institutions eat it up and go the other way. And that's kind of probably what happened uh, on Friday when they, after they spiked right down here and, you know, they let it sit down there, and then right there, there it is. The just came in, and this is the volume spike that just was set the tone for the rest of this session. So that's pretty much the trading in a nutshell. There's your three markets, and, you know, you could apply this to many, uh, many charts. This is just my bread and butter. This is what I trade. So feel free to reach out and or subscribe. And listen, have a great weekend. And uh, we'll see how this thing looks on Monday. Take care.